Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have the April My Monthly Hero Kit for 2019. And as of filming, this kit is still available. So let's go ahead and take a look at what comes inside this kit. The kit retails for $34.99 and um, it's always worth way more than that. So you definitely get your money's worth. It's always packaged really nicely with a ribbon, which I always forget to use. <laughs> And then you get not only some stamps, but you also get some dies. This stamp set is smaller than like past kits, but I think that's because the dies are, there's a lot of dies and they're bigger and more intricate. So it's a four by six clear stamp set, and it actually comes with a lot of sentiments, a few images, but mostly sentiments, and they are in Italian. So I can't actually pronounce most of them, but there's basically good morning, happy birthday, ciao is for both hello and goodbye. I looked them up because honestly, I don't know. Italian. So I looked them all up and uh, wrote that down. Now for my dies, this comes with seven fancy dies and I always put mine on my Marietta magnets and you can get these in bulk on Amazon. They're five by seven, like 25 sheets for $14.99 and I like them. No, they don't have a sticky back and they, um, some people think they're a little bit flimsy. There's one side that's actually much um, more magnetic than the other, but I really like those. Those work out really great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the accessory pack. I love this because it comes with two rolls of half inch foam tape in two different thicknesses. So it's one millimeter and two millimeter. And then you get 14 sheets of five and a half by eight and a half assorted colored cardstock. But first there's the Tombow black pen. This is a 0.3 pen. So it's very thin and that's nice. But like I said, it comes with 14 sheets of five and a half by eight and a half assorted colored paper and it also comes with two sheets of five and a half by eight and a half inches of vellum paper which I try to use all of it. Card number one is going to be pretty colorful actually all of them are actually going to be a little bit colorful and so I'm just going to trim down each of those pieces of cardstock to fit the die that I want them to go with. So I've got some of that craft that I'm cutting down to fit for the cobblestone which is nice because it could be cobblestone or water or whatever you want. Uh, and then I'm also going to cut down the blue. So I'm using both of those buildings and I'm going to cut down one blue for each of those buildings. And then I'm going to do the same with the red, the yellow, and the orange. And that light blue is actually going to be my card base. Now I was inspired by um, a picture that my daughter had taken. It wasn't in Italy. It was actually in, I want to say it was either in France I think it was in France. It was either in France or it was in Belgium. But the buildings, it was like this rainbow road, basically. So there was all the buildings were such beautiful, bright, vibrant colors. And if I can find the picture, I will put that in here if she's all right with that. Um, but it was this is what inspired me. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing my Sizzix. After I ran each of those buildings through my big shot, I'm grabbing this little tool by Sizzix. And... I am just kind of rubbing that all over that just to get all the pieces out. Now I started doing this and I'm using a paper piercer as well. I started doing that before I realized I really didn't want all of those little pieces to come out. I only wanted the windows out. So for my blues, because I wasn't going to recut those, they have all the pieces taken out basically. But for my red and my orange and my yellow, it's all the windows and a few of the other smaller pieces. So I've got my card base all ready to go which is just some of that light blue, and I glued down the cobblestone just using some liquid glue. Now I cut down some of that Versamark, or Versamark, I've cut down some of that um, uh, vellum, and then I'm using the Copic Y32 over that. Copics work very nicely on vellum paper because they're an alcohol-based ink. Normal markers wouldn't work so well on vellum. But I am now just going to tape those, or glue those, right behind each of my... Uh, buildings to make it look like there's light coming through. And then I'll trim off the excess and then I will repeat that process for each of those buildings. And like I said, I just take some of that Y32 and I'm using the chisel tip and I'm coloring all over the back of one of those using the liquid glue just in the spaces and then I will glue that down over the vellum and trim off the excess and I'll do that for the last two as well. Super easy process and then it looks like some lights are on which is fun. Now to adhere those to the card base I'm using some glue on the two back 
buildings. So it's going to be the yellow on this one side, and I'm just lining that up with the cobblestone. And then I'm going to do that also with the orange for the other side. Just putting glue. I didn't put it all over the back because glue will show through the vellum. This isn't a heavyweight vellum, so I was a little bit more concerned in that, in that respect. So I just tried to avoid the open areas. It probably wouldn't be that big of a deal on this light blue cardstock, but I just did it anyway. And then for my two bigger pieces, this is where I pulled out the foam tape that came in the kit. And I grabbed the one millimeter, and I actually really like this foam tape because it can be torn or it can be cut. Because sometimes with these foam tapes, it's not that easy to tear them, but this one tore pretty easily. So I'm not sure if Hero Arts will sell this uh, foam tape separately, but if they do, I will have that linked down below. Because this is a nice manageable size too. It's not like the giant scotch foam one, which that one's great if you do a lot of card making and you use a lot of foam tape. Uh, this is nice just because they're easy to cut. It's a smaller version and yeah, they're, they come in the various sizes, which is nice. And so I'm just filling in the gaps, just putting it in between the windows. And for the blue one, because most of those windows and all the brick were kind of peeled out of there, I had to be a little bit more strategic with how I put that on there. So those are in smaller strips, which is fine. And another thing I like about this is the backing paper comes off very, very easily. So I will stick those down. Just peeling off all that backing paper and lining those up and putting that down. And then I'm going to flip those over and then I'll trim off all the excess cardstock which isn't too much but it'll give the illusion that it's a continuous scene which is kinda cool so there's that and now for my sentiment I have grabbed grazie which means thank you in Italian and I stamp that with VersaMine onyx black ink and then I'll stamp some of the birds it comes with two little bird images um, and I'm only going to stamp the two from this image itself because I didn't want all three. So rule of odds. So now I have five birds on there. And that will finish off this first card. Card number two is a little bit simpler. I'm using just more of these warmer toned colors. And I did grab some craft card stock from my stash. Uh, this is just some Nina Desert Storm cardstock, and I'm trimming down some of that dark blue for the, well, it's going to be the water in this case. And so, and I'm also going to cut down some of that purple. So this is what I used. I used a metal shim because I wanted all those little pieces to come out because by just running it through my Big Shot, I wasn't able to get all the little pieces out. And this way, the little pieces were less attached. And so I was able to use that Sizzix tool once again. And... And that just popped all those little pieces right out, just running that all over that water. was It, it made it so simple. I end up changing gears a little bit later with this piece because I realize that's a very intricate piece, but I will show that later. So I'm also going to use my circle nest abilities. These are one of the circles in that group, and I cut some of that light blue out. And I'm looking at this, and I'm realizing that's really intricate. To try to glue that down is going to be a little bit difficult. So I cut down another piece, and I'm actually going to run this through my Xyron sticker maker. This is the smaller one. Like I've said before, I think I kind of want to get one of those bigger ones. And I'm running that through, and I'm going to trim down some vellum as well, because I have decided that I want to have some of that vellum to back the water as well. I thought that would be a really neat effect and it would make it stick even easier. So both of those pieces are now stickers and so I'm going to trim those down and then I'm going to take that with that metal shim once again and I'm going to run the water through my Big Shot and because I did it with the Big Shot again no problem whatsoever I'm taking that little Sizzix tool and I'm running that all over the background as well. This was one of my Christmas gifts this year, so and I've used it several times. It's a great thing. Now I'm peeling off the backing from my water, and there's a few stray pieces, so I'll just peel those out, and then I'm going to stick that down onto the vellum. 
And once that's adhered down to the vellum, I'm going to trim around that just with my scissors. Um, I didn't find any easier way to do it and I didn't want to run that through with that die because then it would have pulled all those pieces out and that's not what I wanted. So basically I just backed the water with the vellum. That's all I did. And then that vellum also has a sticky back as well. So I'm peeling off the sticker back. And so once the sticker back is off, this is a whole big sticker. And I'm going to stick that on that circle that I ran through and I'm going to trim off all of the excess. And I really end up liking how that looks. It just looks like a little circle with some water on it. And I've got my little gondola guy, but I'm going to stamp some clouds on there first. So I've got my Broken China Distress Oxide Ink, because those are very good for stamping. The Distress Inks themselves aren't really super great for inking or stamping, because that's not their, their purpose, but this Distress Oxides work really well for stamping. So I stamped the clouds and I've just backed my little gondola guy with some glue. And then I'm going to start stamping sentiments. So this is going to be a retirement card. So I've got happy retirement and I'm going to stamp that onto some black cardstock that I just had in my stash. And I'm going to stamp that with Versamark ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. I've covered that with my embossing bag to make sure that no stray powder is where I don't want it. I've inked up my stamp, stamped it out, and now I'm covering that with my white embossing powder. And then I'm going to go ahead and heat that till that is smooth and melted with my heat tool. I trimmed down another piece of black cardstock, and then I'm going to adhere that to the front of my card just with some liquid glue. But I figured I better use my T ruler if I want this to be straight. I use liquid glue most of the time because it does give me a little bit of wiggle room and I don't get things on straight when I just try and eyeball it a lot of times. <laughs> so now I'm just kind of figuring out my placement. I'm grabbing some of the two millimeter foam tape that came in this kit and I'm gonna put that all over the back of my circle. And then I'm going to also put some on the back of my sentiments. So I'll just trim that down. Like I said, this stuff is great. It trims easy, it tears easy, it's really nice. I usually like to t trim just because I like the straight edges. I peeled off all the backing paper and I'm going to stick my circle down and then one, once again, I'll peel off the backing paper for my sentiments, but I will grab my T ruler once again to make sure that I get those sentiments on there fairly straight. I'm going to have a little bit of overhang, but that's not a big deal because I'll just flip that over and trim those off with my scissors. And then that is going to finish off this card. Card number three is another bright one. I grabbed all four of those leftover pieces that I hadn't used for my first card, and I'm going to use a couple of those on this card. But I've trimmed down a piece of that purple cardstock that came in the kit, and I'm going to run that through with a little laundry line. I thought that was so cute. And I'm going to run that through my Sizzix Sidekick. You know this baby had to make at least an appearance, right? <laughs> so I will um, peel off the pieces, and I will set that off to the side. Once again, I so this cobblestone piece that I had cut out, obviously there's a few pieces from it that were that came out of it, but this was a result of not using the metal shim. So I only got a few of those pieces out of there and I thought, that's okay. I think it looks kind of cool. So I ran that through my Xyron sticker maker. Then I'll peel off the paper, revealing this little sticker. And then I'll peel that off and I'm gonna put that on some vellum as well. Cause I thought that looked kind of neat. So it gives it a little bit of a different look. So each of the cobblestones might be a little bit different. You could do some other looks with it by using markers or whatnot, but I like that. So now I'm just going to glue that down. And I glued that down just using some liquid glue onto that yellow card base. And that came from the kit. I love all the bright colors that came in this kit. And once again, I'm gonna take some of that vellum using the R32 Copic, and I'm going to color that because I wanna back these, make it look like lights once again. I figure if you find something that works, you might as well do it, right? So now I'll back each of the four pieces that I had left over from that first card with some of that vellum that I colored with the marker to make it look like lights coming through. I'll do that for each of those. And then I am going to trim off all of the excess from all four of those. Originally, I thought I was going to use all four of these houses or all these buildings 
on this card, but it turns out I decided to only use a couple. I figured I had the bright yellow cardstock for the background. I was using the purple clothesline, and so I decided to just use two of the houses. I'm using my paper piercer to get all the extra pieces out of the clothesline. I'm going to use some liquid glue on the orange house and also the red house. I wish I had used some of the foam tape, but sometimes when you just get going, you forget, which is what I did. Uh, because I do like the look of the foam tape on that next house to make it look like it's popped up from the second house. But, or the first house, but um, so to adhere my clothesline, I'm just using that same liquid glue, kind of poking it underneath the orange house. And then I'm going to use the liquid glue once again on this red house, which this is the one that I thought, oh, I wish I had used the, the foam tape that came in the kit. And then I'll just stick that down. So now it's already starting to look like a fairly colorful card. It's just missing a little blue. So I'm going to take that dark blue after I've turned this over and trimmed off all the excess pieces. I'm going to take that dark blue and I am going to stamp my sentiment, which is just thank you. I'm tending to need a lot more thank yous these days. I will stamp that down using Versamark ink, cover that with some white embossing powder, and then I will heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And then I'm going to let that cool and I'll trim it down and then cover the back with liquid glue and stick that down onto my card. Now we've got a very colorful card almost like a rainbow card. So I've grabbed just a, a yellow ink cube that I have in my stash and I grabbed the little postage stamp or postage, um, what do they call that? Uh, when they cancel, the postage canceller. And I'm inking that up and just sticking that on the background because I thought it needed just a little bit of something. So I'll stamp it out a couple more times onto that background. And I think I like the way that looks. Almost gives it a little bit of a mixed media look but I like it. So when I'm done with that, this is actually going to finish off this third card. Very colorful and just a fun card. Card number four might be my favorite just simply because it is a night scene and I love starry skies. So I have trimmed down some of the blue card stock and I'm gonna run that through my Xyron. Sorry, it's not on screen, but I ran that through my sticker maker. And then I'm going to run that, all the, the, um, the buildings in the background and the river through the Big Shot machine. And then I'll poke all those little pieces out and uh, get that ready to go. Once again, I want those buildings to have some light shining through. So I'm going to trim down some vellum and then I'm going to cover those with that R th or R Y32 Copic marker. And then I will get those ready to adhere to the back once those are dry. Like I said before, Copics work really well on vellum because they're an alcohol-based marker, not a dye-based marker. So um, they will stick pretty well. Now I'm just using some liquid glue on the back of my buildings so that I can adhere those pieces, those vellum pieces right over the, the top of that. And then it'll look like there's light shining through on those buildings as well, which will just add to the scene. Otherwise those buildings will kind of get lost on that navy blue background that I have. So the navy blue cardstock that I have is actually just from my stash and now I have folded that down. It's a top folding A2 size card that measures four and a quarter once folded by five and a half. I am going to splatter the background. This These little bottles came from previous My Monthly Hero kits so I don't know, uh, they don't sell them so these are just from previous kits. I would say you could use any little mica powders or any little splatter that you have. I, these are sparkly, so that's why I chose these. I'm also going to use a little bit of golden titanium white paint, and I have a little bit of water on that, and I'm splattering that. I ended up going a little crazy with the stars, so I dry that with my heat tool, and then I go back in with that first one, which is more of a gold splatter, and it has little mica bits in it, and then I just I thought, well, we're just going to go with it and I heat set that and then we're ready to start assembling. So I peeled off the backing, the sticker backing to my dark blue water and I put that over the vellum once again and I love how that looks. So I've adhered both of the, the buildings and the water down to the card base and now I'm stamping my sentiment which is just chow onto some yellow cardstock that came in the kit and then I will trim that down and then I'm gonna give that a bit of a fishtail banner and then I'm going to adhere that down with some foam tape. 
And these are just little leftover chunks that I had stuck down. And this stuff really does stick because I had a hard time getting it off of the, the roll that I had stuck down. So I'll peel off the backing paper here and I'm just using my paper piercer to do so. And then I will adhere that to the front of my card. And once that is down, this will finish off card number four. I love the starry background. For card number five, I'm using a lot of the pieces that I had already trimmed out once before. So this, I'm covering with washi tape on the back. This is one of those that I had run through without the metal shim using the light blue cardstock. And it cut out some of the little waves, but not all of them. So I'm just sticking down a little bit of washi tape on the back because I want all those little waves to stay in there. I didn't want any of that purple to show through on the back. And so I'm using my crystal katana to get that put back in place. I'll trim off that excess and then I'm going to start preparing things, but this time I want to do a little ink blending. Here I have some Broken China Distress Oxide Ink, and I'm using one of my little beauty brushes by Vivas that I got on Amazon for like $9, all the whole set, and uh, so I will have those linked down below if that's something you're interested in, and I'm going to add a little ink blending to everything. So for this one I'm using Blueprint Sketch, and in between, I'm just cleaning off my brush on a microfiber cloth. It's really simple. And if you find that you're, it's not as clean as you'd like, you could spritz a little water on it and then, you know, just keep rubbing it and it'll be fine. But they're really simple to clean. And this one I'm using brush corduroy. So it's a brown, but I thought that would look nice on that yellow house. For my background, I am using milled lavender. And I'm looking at that going, ooh, that's a little too bright. It's a little bit brighter than I wanted. So I'm trying to blend it out a little bit more and I'm just not getting the look I want, so I end up grabbing some seedless preserves, and I go over the top of that, and then that ends up blending nicely together, and I end up liking that background a lot. So this is just another bright background using a lot of those cardstocks that came in the kit. I'm gonna use some liquid glue to adhere down my little river. Uh, sorry, that's off camera. Uh, sometimes, like I've said before, I just get going in mode, and I just don't even pay attention to what I'm actually doing. And then I'm going to start adhering down my, my buildings. Unfortunately, I wasn't thinking when I put these down, and I didn't use any of the uh, foam tape that came in the kit, but that would have been a really nice touch. It would have really added a lot of dimension to this card. So I do use some liquid glue. And once again, with those backgrounds, I use that vellum to give it some light so that it wasn't just the purple showing through. And I love how it ends up looking. So that one's getting adhered, and then I'll adhere down this one, this yellow one. And again, these were all just leftover pieces that I had all cut out from the first card and didn't end up using. But um, the vibrancy of these colors that came in the kit just really go well together. I've seen a lot of beautiful cards that people have made using um, various techniques with the buildings, making them look like real buildings. But like I said, I was inspired by uh, some pictures that my daughter had brought home from when she went to Europe this last month. Now I'm stamping out the birds using VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and then I'm going to try and stamp with some yellow onto that purple. I wasn't sure how it would look, but I know that the Distress Oxides can stamp really well, and they show up nicely on dark cardstock, and I like how that looks. So I decide to try and stamp it onto this panel, but since I had already ink blended on it, it doesn't show very well. So I cut out the one I had just stamped onto that original purple background and I put some foam tape on the back of that and then I'm going to adhere that right over the top and I like how that ends up looking and that's going to finish off card number five. So a lot of vibrant cards that I made but I just wanted to use a lot of what came in this kit to really come up with some stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the cards that I made. I would love to know if you have a favorite, what you, which one of these you liked. Um, if you liked this video go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. And as always, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thanks.